Hey everyone, Kiwi here. Today I want to show you a quick beginner pixel art walk cycle animation. I'm working on this character for the game that Gudgis and I will be submitting for the Great Summer Game Jam. It's hosted by Feared Studio and it's going on now until June 20th, so you still have some time to join if you would like and I'll leave the link in the description box below. For reference, I'll be using this walk cycle diagram by Richard Williams. It's in his book, The Animator's Survival Kit, and I'll also leave the link to this image and his book in the description box. So here I have sprites of my character for reference, but these will not be part of the animation. The first thing you want to do is animate the body and then add the legs, arms, ears, etc. from there. The body leads the movement and everything else lags behind and kind of has to catch up, and I'll explain more on that in a bit. If you look at the diagram, you can see that the first frame is at a normal height or the contact height, the second frame is lower, the third is a passing position height, which is slightly higher than the contact height, but since we're only working with 16 by 16 pixels, I'm going to say that the passing position and contact heights are the same. The following frame goes up, and then it repeats the cycle from there. So the first thing I'm going to do with my little panda character here is to copy and paste the image in the tiles following the contact height, and then down a pixel, and then back to the contact height and then up a pixel and repeat for all eight of the frames. The feet and the ears go outside of the boundaries of some of the tiles, but I'll fix that in a minute. Next, I'm going to erase the legs so I can start from scratch and draw them based on the diagram. For the contact frame, the legs are separated with the right leg in front and the left behind. I'm using a shade darker for the left leg since it's behind the right leg from the perspective. For the down frame, since the legs are so short that they don't really have knees and they go outside the boundaries of the tile, I'm just going to make the legs a pixel shorter because I don't want to mess the body up. For the passing position frame, the right leg is straight up and down and the left leg is off the ground a bit. So for this I'm going to break the rules a little here and leave off the outline on the bottom of the left foot, otherwise it won't look like the foot is coming off the ground. For the up frame, the right leg is back a little further and the left leg is in front of the body but still off the ground. For the next contact frame, I'm going to copy my first contact frame, but with the colors of the legs switched, so now the left leg is extended forward and the right leg is behind the body. Same thing with the next down frame, I'm copying the first down frame, just switching the colors of the legs again. For this passing position frame, the left leg is straight up and down and the right leg is off the ground a bit, so again, I'm going to match the other passing position frame and leave the bottom of the outline off the right foot so it looks like the foot is coming off the ground. For the final up frame, the left leg is back a little further but still straight up and down and the right leg is coming forward and still off the ground. So here you can see what the animation looks like so far with the body bouncing and the legs moving. And now it's time to animate the swinging of the arms. So arms swing opposite of the legs and since the right leg is extended forward in the first contact frame, I'm going to have the right arm go the opposite way. In the down frame when the weight drops, that will be when the arms are spread the widest. So here the right arm is going past the outline of the body by one pixel, so I'm going to mirror that for the left arm and add one pixel past the outline of the body in the front, since the arms would be swinging the same way in opposite directions. The passing positions and up positions are when the legs switch from back to front and vice versa, so this will also be when the arms switch. So here the right arm will only be slightly swung backwards on the passing frame, and then slightly forward on the up frame. For the next contact frame, I'm going to mirror the arm from the first contact frame, so it's swinging forward but not passing the outline of the body. Same idea for the next down frame. I'm mirroring the arms in the first down frame. Now the right arm will extend past the outline in the front of the body, so I'll add the left arm peeking out behind the body. And for the next passing position frame and up frame, I will have the right arm slightly forward and slightly back, to mirror the first passing position and up frames. I hope all that made sense. All right, now to animate the ears. Again, the body leads the movement and everything else lags behind and has to catch up. This also applies for everything else on the character and for anything the character is holding. For this reason, the ears will be one frame delayed from the body's movement. For example, when the body is lowest during the down frame, the ears will be flattened on the following frame. And when the body is tallest during the up frame, the ears will be up on the next frame. Since the outline of the ears goes outside of the tile on the up frames, I'm just going to break the rules again, like I did with the foot in the passing position frames, and just leave off the top of the outline. It will look fluid once the animation is going. I'm just going to make a falling ear shape for all of the passing position and contact frames, and those can be the same because it works for this example. 
and here's what the animation looks like with the ears flapping. Now, if you want to be a little extra, you can even make the nose bounce. And again, we want this to be on a leg from the body. So we're going to pull the nose down one pixel on the passing position frames, the frame after the body is the lowest. Here's what the animation looks like with the nose bouncing. Let me know which one you like better, with the nose bouncing or without. Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, that is my complete 8 frame walk cycle animation. I am by no means an expert, but I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new about animating a walk cycle. Let me know if you would like to see more videos like this, and if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye!